Hello and welcome to part 4 of module 17 in our C language series. Today we are going to focus on the doubly linked list. Just a recap of the last session, we talked about singly linked lists if you recall and visually as you may know now, it would look like this, right? We have a node, we have the value 40 stored and the address of the next node and that's how we build the linked list, right? But a singly linked list has a drawback. What is the drawback? We cannot read this list in reverse order simply because we're not storing the address of the previous node in every subsequent node. And the solution to that is to have a doubly linked list. Now doubly linked lists will have data just like singly linked lists, but in addition, they will have links to the next node or the next data item as well as to the preceding node or the preceding data item. So if we are talking about this in terms of C, we need two pointers, one pointer pointing to the previous node and one pointer pointing to the next node. Visually, if we look at doubly linked list, it will be something like this. Here we have a node value stored at this address, 1002 is 40, and then we have two pointers you can see, right? One on the left and one on the right. The one on the left, Let's call that the previous pointer that's pointing to null, essentially indicating that this is the first node in the list. And that's important to remember. For the first node in the list, the previous pointer will always point to null. Right? The moment a node has null in its previous pointer position, that is the first node. And the pointer on the right, which now has the address 1006, is essentially pointing to the second node, right? Similarly, with the second node, we have previous pointer pointing to address 1002, which is the address of the first node. And then 2010 will be the address of the third node, right? So in effect, the first node points to the second, Right, and then previous pointer in the second node can point back to the first, and that's how we can access the previous node. Similarly, 1006 points to 2010, right, and then 2010 has got the address of the previous node as well, and so also for the fourth node, right. Okay, so this is how a doubly linked list will be built. What are the advantages then of doubly linked lists? One, the list can be read in both directions, backwards or forwards. This is very important in the case of a database, which will allow the user to scan the list in either direction. If one of the links becomes invalid, we can reconstruct the list because we have the addresses of the previous nodes as well as the Next note. Now, keeping this in mind, let's write some code. Modify the program written in the last session. Right? The one we used to create the singly linked list storing address details. That's the program we're going to modify. And we're going to use that to create a doubly linked list. But having said that, I'm not going to copy that code. We're going to write code for this program. Right? It's just going to be based on that same structure. Let's now go to code blocks and we start a new file. And we start with hashtag include stdio.h and hashtag include stdlib.h hashtag include ctype.h. Now we define our structure. So struct address and structure members will be our name of 40 our street of 20 bytes our city of 20 bytes our state of 3 bytes and our zip of 10 bytes now we'll have two pointers struct address star next and struct address 
star prior. Now you can use any names you like for these pointers, right? But they should be meaningful to what they are doing. So in this case, next is going to point to the next note and prior is going to point to the previous note. we are going to call this address info. And now we'll have our functions. So get data, as we know, is going to return a pointer to a structure of address type, right? So struct address star get data. And there's no parameters for that function. Then store data, returning a void, taking as arguments, we have struct address star ptr which will be the element to add to the list and struct address star star last note that there is no start pointer because for one this is not going to be data in sorted order and secondly we are going to print just using this last pointer so in the first case I will show you how to print in reverse order and then how to print from the start. Right? Now we'll have void print data. And we need pointer struct address. We'll define start here and last. Okay. Now our main function. And within that, we have char reply, or character reply, and then struct address star ptr2, which we will use, right, to catch the value or the return value of the get data function. So now we have a loop while one infinite loop, and within that, we have ptr2 being used, as I said, to get the return value. That is sent by get data. And then pass that on to store data. So store data will take PTR2 and ampersand last, which is the address of last. And then printf any more. And you can add validation. Right, check that the user just types in Y or N and nothing else. Okay. And scan if person is C, comma, ampersand reply. Then we check if to upper of reply equal to N. Then we break from the loop. Which will bring control here where we call print data. And then, of course, we end the program. So, exit, exit, success. Right? So, I hope the main function is clear. That completes main now. Now, we write the code for get data. And for this function, if you like, you can just copy the code because it's the same as in the previous program that we wrote but if you want to type in like i'm doing that's welcome to so struct address star get data and there's no parameters for this function within this function no semicolon there within this function struct address star input PTR. And now we use input PTR along with malloc to allocate memory. So input PTR equal to struct address star, right? So that memory is allocated on the basis of the address template. And then malloc size of. address info 
when we check if not input ptr which means malloc returned a null right then printf out of memory and return control back to mean so return null right otherwise if input ptr is not a null now we just get the information from the user so printf enter name and then scanf percentage s comma input ptr arrow name right and we do the same for the rest of the fields now once we have all the data from the user we just return input yeah right so that completes the get data function we can now write the store data function and that's going to bring in parameters struct address star ptr struct address star last or star star last right because star last will actually contain the address and within this function we check if not star last which means the list is empty right and therefore last is null then ptr prior equal to null right so we are indicating that this is the first element in the list and then star last equal to ptr and that's all else we have star last next equal to ptr right and ptr next equal to none remember we are creating the list by just appending to it there's no sorting here right so star last next equal to ptr ptr next equal to null essentially the last element on the list until of course we add another one then ptr prior should be equal to the last element added so that will point to the last element added and last will now point to ptr right okay so the last element will essentially be the one just added to the list right that's all so that completes the store data function i hope that's clear any questions you can post in the comments now we have the print data function and as i said this is going to print in reverse order so struct address star print ptr and print ptr equal to last then while print ptr is not equal to none then we just print all the information right so here you can see the last address will be printed first and therefore we will say here print ptr equal to print ptr prior right so that's how we are printing it in reverse order right so now we run this we should see our list printed in reverse order let me call in somewhere oh, it's okay okay so just going to enter some data you can enter whatever you like
Okay, now we are getting something funny where we are printing out city. So let's go and check that. It's just junk there. Oh, this is the problem, right? There's a bracket there. And therefore we have that arrow. Right? So let's run this now. And now you will see that the last item that we put in data for is printed first. Right? This is how it's printed in reverse order. But what if we wanted to print forward? So we would have to change our print data function. To do that, what you need to do is, first of all, just comment out this line. And this loop as well right so essentially you can comment out from here until here and struct address print ptr comma previous ptr and ptr just call that p you can call it whatever you like right or ptr last if you like that it makes more sense and now we'll say ptr last equal to last right and while ptr last not equal to null all we'll do is we'll say previous ptr equal to ptr last right and ptr last equal to ptr last prior so we're going now from the last entry to the first right it is in this loop and then we just say print ptr equal to previous PTR. Right? And then while print PTR. So while print PTR is not equal to null, and then we can just print out the information. So you can just copy this or these rather print statements. Right, and then print PTR equal to print PTR next instead of prime. Right, alternatively, you can have the start pointer like we did for singly linked list. Now I leave that to you. Right, you can store the first address in start, and then you can use start as we did for singly linked list. Right, so now we are printing from the first one. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Now moving on. Modify the code so as to create a doubly linked list in sorted order. Right, so let's do that now. Go back to code blocks. And we are going to modify this. We are going to write a new program. So hashtag include stdio.h and then hashtag include stdlib.h hashtag include ctype.h and hashtag include string.h because we're using string compare. Right? Struct address. And of course the structure members will be the same. And we need two pointers, struct address 
Now next, instruct address star prior. Right? Call this address in four. And now our functions that we will have will be instruct address target data. No parameters going in there. Void store data. Struct address. Star PTR for the new element we're going to add. Former. Struct address. Star star start. Struct address. Star star last. And void print data. And we need struct address. These are variables, of course. Two pointers, start and last. Now the main function. And within the main function, character reply. Instruct address star ptr2 again that will be used to get the return value from the get data function start equal to null right and last equal to null now we have our loop while one infinite loop that is ptr2 equal to get data and then store data is going to be passed ptr2 as argument along with the address of start and the address of last right right hope you're with me now print f anymore And scan it, percentage C, comma, ampersand reply. And of course, we check if to upper of reply is equal to N, then we can break out of the while loop, which again brings control here where we can call print data and end the program right that's the end of main now let's write the code for the get data function Right, and for this one, I'm just going to copy the code from the previous program because it's essentially the same. Right, so we just take the code from get data, which is here, and we can just copy that code. Into this function. Right. Once that is done, now we can write the store data function. So void store data and that's going to have struct, struct address star ptr as a parameter and then struct address star star start as another parameter and of course struct address Start star last. Right? We need variables. So struct address star previous and star current, which will help us to do the sorting. 
now when we are sorting right we would have three situations one where we are, where we are inserting in the middle right or the second is where we are replacing the start element right or the third is when we are appending to the list right so before we write the code let's take a look at a visual to understand what happens when we are inserting the middle first let's say we have a case like this and we want to insert etr now which is going to go in between these two right considering the name starts with c now what do we need to do first first of all this particular pointer which is the next pointer or the pointer pointing to the next node should point to this one right but how do we access this particular pointer considering we have current yeah, and we're working with current so we could say current prior which will essentially be this node next so current prior next equal to ptr right so that's the first thing we will do then ptr prior should now point to this node Right, so we can say PTR prior equal to current prior. Right? And PTR next should now point to this node. So PTR next equal to current. And the last thing we need to do is current prior should now point to PTR. Right, so that's what we need to do if we are inserting a node in the middle. Now, what if we need to replace the start element? So let's look at a visual again. We now have Abe. Abe comes before Andy. And current is now pointing to Andy. Right? Now, if we've got to replace this, then of course, PTR prior should be equal to null. PTR next should point to current, right? But remember that current prior cannot be null now. Current prior should point to PTR, right? And then, of course, we've got to change the start pointer as well to point to PTR. So in our code, we will write PTR next equal to current, right? PTR prior would be null. Current prior would point to PTR and then start equal to PTR. So if you're not now inserting in the middle and we're not, you know, replacing the start element, then we are pending to the list. And that code remains the same as earlier. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So now let's go back to the code and put in the code for stored data. So first of all, we check if the list is empty. So if not star last, which means there's nothing in our linked list, then PTR next will now be equal to null, right? PTR prior should also be equal to null right and then last should point to ptr and start should also point to ptr remember we have just this one node in the list and we return right so that's if the list is empty otherwise we say current equal to start and previous equal to null and now while current is not equal to null we'll check if strcmp of current arrow operator name comma ptr arrow operator name 
is less than zero which means it's already in order then we just move along previous equal to current and current equal to current next else which means these are not in sorted order then what we do is we check if current prior is not equal to null what this means is that we are not replacing the start element rather we are inserting in the middle right so current prior next equal to ptr ptr next equal to current right ptr prior will be equal to current prior right and current prior will now be equal to ptr right just as we saw on the slide there and return right so if current prior is not null this will be done if it is null which means we are replacing the start element then ptr prior will be equal to null ptr next will be equal to current current prior will be equal to ptr right and start will be equal to ptr and then return right otherwise we're just appending to the list right so previous next equal to ptr ptr next equal to none and this is going to be the last element as long as we don't add any more ptr prior equal to previous right and then last star last equal to ptr okay and that completes the code for store data now we write the print data function so void print data and here we'll just use the start pointer so while start and you can just copy this or rather this one and then we can change print ptr to start right so now we need to replace print ptr with start right so click on search and replace let's say print ptr and replace with start right replace all okay so that's it right so let's run this now okay current prior this should be an arrow right and this no semicolon there and again right put in data in unsorted order And you can see that this is printed now in sorted order right so i hope that's clear this now ends our session for today in the next session we'll talk about how we delete a note from the list and we will write a program as well that will encompass everything we've learned in terms of linked lists right so till then take care stay safe bye